Hey, hey y'all. y'all. It's Ashley, a.k.a. Ash. And Shantavia, a.k.a. Shay. And, and this, this is Obedience Podcast. So we want to welcome you guys to our brand new series for the month of October, Perfect Peace. <laughs> where the objective is to get believers to understand that in this world, it's inevitable to come into trials and tribulations. Mm-hmm. But we must remember throughout it all, we always have the perfect peace of God to sustain us. So our anchor scripture is John chapter 16, verse 33 in the Amplified Version. And it reads, I have told you these things so that in me you may have perfect peace. In the world you have tribulation and distress and suffering, but be courageous, be confident, be undaunted, be filled with joy. I have overcome the world. Mm -hmm. My conquest is accomplished. My victory abiding. So in this episode, we are going to talk about what is perfect peace. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to hand it over to Ashley so she can give you the focus scripture for this episode. That's right. So before we can talk about peace, we got to define it. So what is peace? And the perfect scripture is Philippians 4 and 7. And it reads, In the peace of God... That peace which reassures the heart, that peace which transcends all understanding, that which stand guard over your heart and your mind in Christ Jesus, is yours. So what a perfect scripture to define peace. Not as the world sees it, but what comes from God. Transcends all understanding, surpasses all understanding. But before we get into the lesson on today, we want to go ahead and invite the third member of this crew, Holy Spirit. So go ahead and bow your heads. Father God, we thank you for this day. We will rejoice and be glad in it, Father God. We thank you for bringing us together to discuss your word, to study your word on today, Father God, and to dive deeper in the peace that you have given us, God, this gift of peace that you have given us through Holy Spirit. We thank you for the peace, God, that surpasses all understanding, that continuously guard our hearts and our minds, Father God. We thank you for our listeners on today, Father God. We pray that you open up their ears, their minds, their hearts to receive um, what your peace is, God. No matter what's going on around them, Father God, that they will focus on you and in that that they will find your perfect peace, God that will continue to guard their hearts and minds through whatever they are going through. Nothing is too big, nothing is too small that you cannot handle, Father God. So we ask that they realign their focus in you, Father God, and to focus on you, to look look to you for peace and not look at the world's peace on today. We thank you for being our mouthpiece on today, God. We are your ambassadors. We pray that and, and invite you in, Holy Spirit, to give us the words to say to your the hearts of your people and also the minds and spirit of them as well. We thank you and we believe it is done in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right, so let's go ahead and jump into the episode. So what I wanted to do is I wanted to break the scripture up into three different sections. Mm-hmm. So the first part of the scripture says, and the peace of God, that peace which reassures the heart. Yeah. So I want to talk about that first while we're describing what peace is. So the most important thing that I thought of when I thought about peace is that first and foremost, peace is a promise of God. And because it's a promise, we should be in a state of calmness because we know that it's something that we already have. Mm-hmm. It's not something that can be earned or something that can be purchased. It's something that we have when we're in union with Christ. Mm-hmm. And in Ezekiel thirty-seven twenty-six, it says, I will make a covenant of peace with them. It will be an everlasting covenant. So it's not a cutoff of peace. Peace is always going to be here with us. And we know that when God says something when he promises something it's a fact like nothing can change that if y'all haven't checked out our mayflower series go ahead and check that out because we talked about the promises of god Mm -hmm. there i actually looked up the definition of peace in my study bible and it defines peace as a state of calm freedom from strife or discord and harmony in personal relationships Mm -hmm. 
where it says harmony and personal relationships, it made me think about how peace comes from trusting God in situations you can control and situations you can't control. And that's going to lead to that peace that transcends all understanding when we get into having a peace in those situations that we can't control. Mm -hmm. And I love the fact that you said that it's a state of being because I mean no matter what's going on around you you can have a stance of being at peace mm -hmm. like peace doesn't come from what's going on around you you can have the same amount of peace whether something's going on around you or nothing's going on well, when you said that it made me think of they stand outside like the like a hotel or something oh, and yeah, they stand yeah. guard at the hotel mm -hmm. and no matter what's going on around them they don't flinch, they don't move, they don't look to the side or nothing like that. Mm -hmm. But their focus is on guarding that door, or whatever they're there for. Their focus is on guarding that door yeah. and doing the job. Mm -hmm. So in a spiritual sense, we should have that same kind of focus, no matter what's going on around us. Now in the flesh, we may lean a little bit. We have to get back in the state of being of, okay, my, my God promised me. Like Shay said before, the, the covenant right to everlasting peace. So just because the situation in, okay, whew, got peace in that situation. That's cool. I can have that same amount or that same kind of peace in whatever I'm going through. The key is giving it to God in prayer. Yeah. A lot of things and a lot of, of our feelings we don't have to stay with. I, and I'm saying we because I've done this before. We have forfeited the peace that Jesus died on the cross for. A lot of things that we do not have to keep. We have to learn to continuously cast our cares upon the Lord because he cares. He genuinely cares for us, y'all. And I always say we because sometimes I get in the mix sometimes and I have to realize that, hey, God's word says this, that we can have peace no matter what we're going through. In the newness of a new job, I can have peace even though I don't know what I'm doing sometimes, I can have peace because I know that God has already gone before me and made ways. He's brought favor my way to lend people their, their resources, their finances, their, their, their minds and wisdom to be able to provide for me or to show me in a way. So why forfeit your rights to peace if it's freely been given to you? Jesus died for that peace so that we can have this peace in this life. But I wanted to point out that God's peace doesn't always look like what we think it's going to look like. <laughs> you know, we can only imagine things from an earthly point of view. Mm -hmm. But God's peace is going to look exactly how he needs the situation to look. Mm -hmm. So just because we say that you have the peace of God, it doesn't mean that you're not going to have disturbances happen right. in your everyday life. Or you're always going to have positive thoughts, especially when it comes to your purpose. Or if you're in a ministry when it comes to it, it doesn't mean you're always going to wake up. I'm ready to serve. My God. I'm ready to have purpose. You know. My God. <laughs> you're not going to always wake up like that. Everything isn't always going to go well with mm -hmm. you. You're not going to always have all the money in the bank. But despite having all of those, what we would say, negative situations, mm -hmm. we still have peace in those because we know that at the end of the day, God is going to work out his perfect will. Right. And if things are going his way. Why wouldn't be peaceful? Right. So God, peace is going to bring you tranquility, even if it's chaos all around you. Mm -hmm. You're still going to have that peace. Right. And like Ashley, what you talked about with over there in the UK, the guards, and like you said, no matter what's going on, they can't move. They got to stand guard yep. on that. Mm -hmm. And that is what Jesus is for us. Mm -hmm. So that part in the scripture that says, that peace which stands guard over your hearts and your mind in Christ Jesus. We have to remember that Jesus already won the victory. Mm -hmm. Jesus is literally our Prince of Peace. If we look in Isaiah 9 and 6, it says, And he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Wonderful. Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Mm -hmm. So Jesus has already won the victory. So... Another definition of peace from the Merriam-Webster Dictionary is a state or period in which there is no war 
or a war has ended. <laughs> so That's Jesus true. has already won the victory. That's so true. we're at a constant state of peace mm-hmm. because the war is over. Period. The fight has already been won. And so because we have Jesus, we have access to that perfect peace that we're talking about. And the part of the scripture where it says, stands guard over your heart, we have to allow the peace of God to enter our hearts because the enemy can and will attack your heart yep. and your mind. Yep. And so we definitely have to keep at it, allowing God in to give us that peace. Like Ashley was saying, we yep. have to continuously give our worries and cares over to him. And you write about the devil will try to, you know, plant those seeds of doubt and mm-hmm. and it's, it's like a slow thing he sifts mm. a little sneaky little thing but one, one thing i got for you is the word of god and his promises as well yeah he may say that hey you don't have peace you got chaos all around you uh-uh. she just told me that he <laughs> is the prince of peace mm-hmm. uh, peace i need you come on when those thoughts come to try to seep into our mind or even if it seeps into your mind you can start Quoting God's scripture, his promises. Mm-mm. My God should supply all of my needs. and yeah. That's my, my mental as well, not just financial. He is my prince of peace. And the peace of God, it transcends my hearts and my feelings and all that good stuff. Yeah. So no matter how I feel, no matter how it looks like, I can call on my father. And it brings me into when I was younger, if somebody said something to me, hurt my feelings, you know, said something they weren't supposed to say about I was a real little sensitive child, you know. So if somebody did that to me, I remember this one time, I told my daddy. Now, I had an assurance in my daddy that once I tell him something, he going to take care of it. And I ain't got to worry about it no more. And every time I told him something, I said, hey, he got my feelings or he stole my bike. He took care of it. Then I can go back to the person and say, hmm, my daddy told you. After that moment, I did not have to worry about any more. So we should apply that the same in a spiritual sense as well. Our father, Abba, who is better than any parent on this earth. That's, he's better than your mother, father, grandmama, all of them put together. So once we tell him, hey, the devil been tripping. Yep. But I know that you are more powerful, God. I know that Jesus died on the cross for my sins. And then once we cast our cares to God, because he cares for us, the scripture says that. We can look at the devil and be like, hmm, my dad took care of that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Bye, poo. We have to use the Holy Spirit, the gift that God has given us. Holy Spirit to speak to those mountains. Mountain, move out of the way. We have to speak to our mountains. Don't allow our mountains to overtake us. We have got to get back into a stance of being a Christian. And when I say that I'm a Christian, I'm a believer of God's word, I believe that Jesus Christ is my Savior. Act like it. <laughs> I ain't mean to say it like that, but just act like yeah, it. know who you are. Know who you are. Understand who you are and your stance, your yeah. status. You have a Savior that can help you do that. Mm-hmm. We just don't read God's word or we don't have it available for us to just be, oh, I'm so tired of mountain. <laughs> Peace, everything going on around us. Uh Uh-uh, you better straighten up. Yeah. And then even ask yourself the question, am I I low in my faith? Am I not believing God's word? So even referencing the scripture, Matthew 17 and 20, it says, because of your little faith, your lack of trust and confidence in the power of God, are we we lacking the the confidence? Do we need a faith check-in? Just remember to be set apart and be in the interdependent relationship. Y'all see how Holy Spirit brought that back? Mm-hmm. And also realize who Abba is and your stance in that. Yeah. Like you were saying, we as believers, we have authority mm-hmm. to tell that mountain to move. That's right. And that's why it's so important to know who you are because you know what you have the capability and ability to mm-hmm. do. And you know who's standing behind you and backing you up. Like we mentioned, the peace of God is found in Jesus Christ, Mm -hmm. who is our Prince of Peace. And so all we have to do in order to gain access to this perfect peace that we've been talking about in this episode is accept Jesus Christ as our Savior. So through Jesus Christ, we are all offered the opportunity to have a personal relationship with God. 
So if you would like to receive Jesus Christ as your Savior, now is the perfect opportunity to do so. All you have to do is repeat this very short prayer after us, and you'll be a part of the union of Christ. Mm -hmm. Lord Jesus, without you, I am lost. Today, I make the decision to make you the Lord of my life. I give you the throne of my heart to lead and guide me in the way that I should go. Thank you for forgiving and delivering me from sin. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. And just like that, it's that simple. You are now a part of the union of Christ, and we are so excited to have you a part of the family. Mm -hmm. Come on, get some of this peace. Yeah. It's enough to go around. Yeah, Come it on. is. If you repeated that prayer after us, be sure to connect with the Bible Teaching Church. We always leave our church's live stream link in the description box below, where we go live at 8.30 and 10.30 a.m. Central Standard Time every single Sunday. All right, so comment down below your definition of perfect peace. Or even let us know, you know, a time that you experience God's perfect peace. Yes, I'm we'll ready for the story time. Yes, I'm ready. And then while you're down there, go ahead and hit the like button. And then be sure that you are subscribed. Mm -hmm. And then hit that bell notification so you're notified every single time we upload. Alright, and also while you're in that little section over there, go ahead and share this video with five of your friends and also enemies, y'all. We bless them, okay? Alright, let's count them up. It's one, two, three, four, and five. Go ahead and share it out. Let everybody know about this perfect piece. Go on. And then if you haven't, be sure to follow us on all of our social media platforms. They should be on the screen for you right now. And if you have any prayer requests, be sure to send those to us at obediencepodcast at gmail.com. And we'll be sure to stand in agreement with you. So that's all that we have for you guys today. We want to thank you for spending your Saturday morning thank with you. us. And we just pray that throughout this week, you continue to have peace mm -hmm. and introduce someone else to God's perfect peace. Yeah. But in the meantime, in between time, as always, be, be obedient. obedient. We'll see y'all next Saturday. Bye. Doot, bloopers. <laughs> I can't hear out this ear, so I just want to make sure my tone. Okay, you good. Okay. You're not loud. Okay. Because I will start screaming. Hey, y'all. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's shy. <laughs> not a real child. Take it down. <laughs> Take it down, Pastor. <laughs> so what a perfect scripture to go ahead and introduce the series and to, to find to. <laughs> bunny hop. A bunny hop. Not bunny hop. <laughs> So when I was reading this, it brought me to one of the, um, can't get my words out. My daddy told you. <laughs> That's why you said it. I ain't said it out loud because I'm just a scared little child. I ain't say much. But I said it in my spirit. <laughs> also that you are a provider in all of this good stuff, Father God. Oh, not all that good stuff. Also... Well, you could just take that part out. <laughs> oh, great mountain, move out of my way. I like that. I like that song. So am I not? Uh -oh. <clears throat> you need to check up. <laughs> I must do. <laughs> <coughs> okay. Yeah. Let's count them up. It's five. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, Ash. Okay. <laughs> Let's count them up. <laughs> I like Sorry. I'm just gonna keep my hand right. out. <laughs> so let's count them up. You need some milk. I do. <laughs>